Well, Florence is being blamed for at least 17 deaths in North and South Carolina. Rising rivers are threatening to overflow and trigger more devastating flooding across the region. Hundreds of thousands of homes are still without power, and this comes as the remnants of Florence moves north through West Virginia and Ohio. For more on Florence now, we want to bring in meteorologist and CBSN contributor Jeff Baradelli. Thanks for joining us, Jeff. I know you've been working really hard since last week. So what's the situation with Florence now? Uh, Florence right now is beginning to weaken, as we've seen, which is good. And the rain bands are kind of getting uh, more dispersed across North Carolina. Storm's going to be moving up the Appalachians. It's still going to produce some flooding rain, so don't let down your guard, especially if you're in the mountains area, uh, West Virginia, western parts of Virginia. And eventually, as we head into tomorrow, uh, and even later today, it's heading into places like Washington, D.C. and New York City. We're going to get some rain, as well as the upstate of New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, in general, another three to six inches of rain at max. Some places will see even less than that. But still, flash flooding is especially in those hilly mountainous areas. Mm. So a lot of people are wondering why was Florence so devastating? Yeah. The season last last year's hurricane season devastation. What's going on? Well, it's two things. First of all, you know, it's hurricane season. We're at the peak of hurricane season. We would expect stuff like this to happen. This is fairly typical, but everything has spiked because of a warmer climate. So, you know, we don't know exactly how much extra rain has been produced uh, by climate change as it pertains to Florence. We probably won't know that for quite a while. We need to do some research on that. So usually after storms, we do attribution studies. That'll probably happen over the next few weeks, maybe the next couple of months. Um, uh, generally speaking, you know, with Harvey, uh, most scientists kind of agree it's probably 15 to 20 percent last year of extra rain. Maybe a couple of reports said a lot more than that. Uh, this time it may be somewhat similar. I mean, climate change is slowing down storms. It's causing more blocking in the atmosphere. It's weakening steering. And so, you know, I don't think it's any coincidence that we saw Harvey last year crawl to a halt. This year, we see Florence crawl to a halt. Uh, in addition, you know, rapid intensification seems to be increasing right now because we have warmer water temperatures. Warmer water temperatures cause these storms to intensify more rapidly. And with warmer water, warmer air temperatures, it's it just like a bigger sponge, right? So if you have warmer air, you can hold, it's like a bigger sponge can hold more water. The atmosphere can hold more water and eventually it gets squeezed out in the form of heavy flooding rain. But sort of the way we measure hurricanes has to do with wind speed. Mm -hmm. And as we we were watching Florence approach, you know, the mainland. That's what we were afraid of. Like, it's already a yeah. Category 4. Will it become a Category 5? And we're seeing these really intense hurricanes more and more. I mean, is there, I don't even know if there's a Category 6. <laughs> Can we get to that? Well, there's a lot of controversy yeah. uh, right now. Um, there's some argument from social scientists that say, well, how is that going to help people better prepare? Category 5 is already devastating. Why call for a Category 6? But there are climate scientists. Does the that category even exist yet? It doesn't exist yet. Okay. No, it doesn't exist yet. There was a report put out a few days ago by GFDL, which is the Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory, which is down in Princeton, New Jersey. They have this brand new state-of-the-art model, probably the best climate model that we've ever had. And they projected hurricanes out into the future. Uh, the end of the century, and they find a pretty big 20% uptick in the strongest hurricanes, so the most intense hurricanes, and a huge uptick in the most intense hurricanes, winds of 180, 190 miles an hour plus. So it's very likely in the future, and this is cutting edge research and it needs to be looked over, yeah. but these were prominent scientists with a great computer model saying that our future could be one of much more uh, intensity and, as far as hurricanes. And is that because of climate change? Yeah, it's because of warmer water temperatures. I mean, mm. it really is very simple. It's kind of like using 87 octane in your fuel tank or 93 octane in your fuel tank. Yeah, 87 runs it, but 93 gives it an extra pep or an extra spike. Right. That's what's happening. Warmer water temperatures, you know, it's easy meteorology. Warmer water is going to lead to stronger storms uh, and it's likely going to lead to storms with more rain and we're already seeing some of that across the globe right now. Any way to turn the clock back? Um, I, it's, it's almost impossible and really? the reason is carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere for hundreds if not thousands of years. So the only way to really do that is through technology. Um, it's called uh, carbon capture and storage. We would actually have to suck the carbon out of the atmosphere, believe it or not. And when we look at the IPCC reports, when we talk about a future where we can mitigate climate change, it actually has to factor in carbon uh, sequestration and storage. Otherwise, we can't bring 
the temperatures down uh, to the levels that we want to, which is somewhere between 1.5, hopefully less than 1.5, but 1.5 and 2 degrees Celsius. The bottom line is we need to capture that carbon. We need to store it away because the problem is, is we've built in warming for literally decades and decades into the future, if not longer, because of the carbon that's already in the atmosphere. It's complicated. It can be done. We have to hope for cross our fingers technology that can help us with this in the future. That is fascinating. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like something out of science fiction, doesn't probably it? Probably not cheap. It's, it's, right. not, it's not cheap. <laughs> Which is but, for a lot of people. But you know but what's it expensive? Cost more. Category 6 hurricanes. Right. Yeah, Category 6 <laughs> hurricanes exactly and point. the planet, you know. I mean, That's exactly it, it, makes, it makes sense when you explain the science behind it. The question is, can you get folks that make these decisions, specifically lawmakers, to agree? Yeah. So, so this is the interesting thing. I always say to people, would you rather have a cavity drilled now or a root canal later? I mean, we can have a cavity drilled now. It's going to cost some money, right. but the root canal is going to cost a whole lot more in the future. So if we don't do something now, it's just going to cost us more and more and more. And we're putting it on the back of our children and our grandchildren. Yep, it's true. All right, yep. Jeff Beardelli, thank you so much. You're Appreciate welcome. that.